<clears throat> All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. We are going to be in Luke chapter 17 today. Yesterday, I ran into a debacle. I mislabeled a video because I mislabeled the video before. Anyways, I got them all fixed. So if you were with me yesterday, you noticed that I was saying it was... Let's see, yesterday, I don't know, but anyways, I was reading what I, I don't know, anyway, <laughs> it's so confusing. Anyways, we're back on point. I say we're in Luke chapter 17, and we are in Luke chapter 17, and I promise we haven't missed anything. I've maybe missed, I don't know. Anyways, we're fixed. Um, <laughs> like I said, we're going to be in Luke 17 today, guys, so thank you guys for joining me, man. I can't thank you enough for letting me share God's word with you. Let's pray. Father God, I want to come before you today, Lord. I want to lift all the praise, all the glory, all the worship up to the throne of you, God. Your kingdom is what we seek after, Lord. Help us to bring that and, and its similitude to this earth, Lord. I ask, Father God, that you continue to push each of us forward in our own hearts, in our, in our own studies, that we that we don't become complacent and that we, we continue to seek to know you better, to, to please you more truly, to, to live our lives in a way that is a sweet-smelling aroma to you, Lord. Prepare in us that clean heart, Lord. Renew that steadfast spirit, Lord, that we need so much, Lord. You are our source of all, Lord. Allow us to walk in the truth of that, in the, in the, in the victory that is inherent in that. In your heavenly name, I pray, guys. God is so good, y'all. So good. Luke 17. So somebody out there shout amen if you didn't wake up and get high today, huh? All right, guys. Luke 17. Then he said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. But woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it would obey you. And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat. But he will not rather say to him, Prepare something for my supper, and gird yourself, and serve me till I have eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Now it happened... As he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here, or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. 
and they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. All right, guys, amen. We're going to talk about that last one at the end there, okay? Thank you guys for letting me share, share with you, man. I'm telling you what, man. God's word, guys, it's everything. It's everything we need. Oh, it's so good, guys. So good. Um, so moving along into chapter 17 of the Physician's Gospel... We get a heaping helping of powerful words in red. Jesus touches on faith, duty. He warns of wrongful offenses. We see ten lepers get cleansed. One of them grateful for it. And lastly, Jesus delivers some powerful scriptures concerning the coming of the kingdom of God. 17, 1 and 2. Then he said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offense should come. But woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. So, here the word offenses in its original Greek, which is scandalon, speaks of a baited trap that was used to ensnare small animals. That's what the word offense means. So, millstones by necessity were large, they were round, they were heavy, being made of stone, and they were capable of pulverizing grain by just their weight alone and some movement. So, Jesus is using intentionally powerful imagery here to point to the magnitude of how leading the youthful or naive or inexperienced into intentionally wrong directions as well as abusing them in any other ways. 17, 5 through 6. I guess 5 and 6. And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. So the Lord said, If you have faith as a mustard seed, and you can say to this mulberry tree, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Okay, guys, so... Here it would appear that the Lord's apostles think great faith is needed to be so forgiving. I mean, he's saying, you have to just keep forgiving and forgiving. And they're like, Lord, you got to give us more faith. We don't have the faith to do that. We, we, they're like, you got to fill up our faith meter. You know what I mean? That's their thought process behind it. Being the living word, a divine order, the Lord highlights how even small faith can manifest much. See, we glimpse a powerful truth in these verses right here, these two verses. We, we, we view a core tenet of our relationship with our divine and loving creator. And that is that the amount of faith is really not important. As long as we have a pinch of faith, 
we're good. Because, see, the power, it doesn't lie in the faith or the amount of faith. It lies in the object of our faith. It lies in a great and powerful God. So you only need to believe just a little because you're believing in an almighty, all-powerful God. So, let's see. 17.7 And which of you, having a servant, plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? So he's saying, which of you is like this? Because the etiquette of normal life dictated that a master did not, nor was he obligated to offer slaves relief of household duties simply because they had already worked hard that day, inside or outside. Jesus here points to how he's doing something different. How when the kingdom of God comes, it is going to be role reversals in, the, in this sort of way. And we see that this is actually practiced, put into practice at the Last Supper. 1710, guys. Oh, sorry, my thing fell. Oh, I'm so sorry about that, guys. I don't know why it's wanting to do that. All right, so where were we at? Um, 17.10. I apologize, guys. i got to get me a new tripod. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. He's saying... What credit is it to you? You're just doing what you're supposed to do. So, this presents to us a near laughable idea. As Father God's servants, we can never exceed, nor can we even fully meet our true obligation to Him. So, the thought process here is unlimited forgiveness towards others in light of all God's given and done for us already. Alright guys, 17.14. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. So, I, I put this one here, show me something. Because here, when Christ instruct these men to visit the priest, he was, he was wanting them to go and get a certificate of release. This was a paper that indicated that they were disease-free. In the middle of doing as they were told... They were healed. See? He could have healed them instantly. He didn't. He could have healed them when they got finished with everything that he had told them to do. He didn't. When they took that step, when they showed that initiative, when they went part in, then he did it. Then he did it. They, they were, he was able to meet them in their need and in their obedience in that moment, and they were healed. And that's amazing, guys. And that's what Christ still offers to us today. Oh, this thing is so crooked. It's driving me crazy, guys. 1715. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So one returns out of gratitude, out of the ten. And it's a Samaritan, which I think is interesting because all of this seems to really foreshadow or hint at that inkling that the kingdom of God is actually going to be going to new places and there will be Gentiles enfolded into this, into this people, into God's people. All right, guys, 1721. <clears throat> Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Now, I used to be confused about this because I'm like, is he saying that it's inside the Pharisees? So check it out. I finally did some digging and I've come to an actual resolute answer on this. Often today, people will say things, check this out. Often today, people will say things like, we are all God's children. You know, there's a God, God's inside each and every one of us. Well, that's just not true. I'm sorry. It's not true. We all have the potential to be God's children and we were certainly all created by God. But that's about where that stops. See, 
On that note here, the translation of within you accurately points to the kingdom's presence in Jesus and Jesus' presence amongst them. Or in other words, the kingdom of God is within you. It's within your realm, your view, your, your purview. That's what's being said there. He was not saying that God was inside each of the Pharisees. That's not what was being said. 17.22-24 through 24. Then he said to the disciples, The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look here, or look there, do not go after them, or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. So when Christ returns on the cloud, in, in, in the bringing in of the, 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 the fulfillment of God's kingdom, his second coming, all of, the, all of humanity will be divided instantly, guys. That's how it'll be. Instant. Like, so quick that we can't even begin to grasp how quick it will be. 1730. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Okay, so the culminating return will not only be seen by all, as we talked about, it will be in a flash. It will be unexpected by so many. And it will, to be clear, guys, it will afford no shot at last-second repentance. So if you're thinking that you can wait until the trumpet sounds, it's not how it works. 1737. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? You know what? Let me back up and read this again, with 36 included. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken, and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. So that's kind of a weird verse, huh? It's kind of confusing. Well, check it out. We all know that dead bodies attract vultures. And here, that idea is sort of built on in that Christ is pointing to the fact that the spiritually dead draw judgment. They draw these eagles, these righteous eagles of judgment, circling over the bodies of the workers of iniquity, right? Anyways, guys, thank you for letting me share God's word with you, man. It's a new year, it's a chance to do more for him and to do it better than before, right? To do it with more love and more kindness and just a little more Jesus in us, right? Every day. So anyways, guys, I make a new video like this six days a week and he wants us, he wants us to do this, guys. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, guys. Share it if you loved it. Um, if you have any prayer requests, any comments, anything like that, man please drop that down here into the comment section. And just know this, guys. I love you so much. And Father God loves you so much more. Christ was, Christ was ready to get on the cross for you. So that's the, that's the kind of character that you are in his eyes. Just remember that. I love you guys. Go out there and have a blessed day, y'all.